All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day and I do have a vlog. I got a vlog planned out for you. It's going to be a little bit, uh, I don't know, of a condensed vlog, I guess. I'm not going to do all of the segments. You, you know me. A lot of people know me by now. I like fiddling around with stuff. I like changing it up. I like doing different segments here, some other different segments here. We're going to move stuff around. We're going to change it up because we always got to change it up. There's actually a bigger reason why we're doing a little bit of a condensed vlog this week. I am redoing my office this weekend and it's going to be a pretty large undertaking. Everything is getting moved. Everything is getting taken out of my office. First of all, all the art's coming off the walls. All my cabinets are getting moved. Things are getting organized. Mods are getting cataloged and put away. Organizing things like juice and $2 sales. And I'm going to be moving my desk around to the other side of the office. I'm going to be moving some shelving around. I'm going to be moving my helmets around. It's going to be kind of a big, long, huge process. And I really just need all the time that I can to get this project done. It's just something I've been wanting to do for a while now. When you, when you, when you have an office like this, and I don't know, I don't need to explain all this. It's, it's pointless. Ultimately, it's pointless. But when you have an office like this and you're acquiring things and you get new art and you get new things and you get new mods and you need places to store things and you need to hang things on the wall and do stuff like this, you kind of just do it as you go along. And I've gotten to a point where I can't just go along anymore. I actually have to have like a plan. I need a much better organized office. So that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend and I just need all the time that I can to do that. So we're going to do a little bit of a condensed vlog today and then we might do another condensed vlog next week as well and then probably starting after ECC in February which yeah definitely definitely going to ECC in Southern California in February. I'm going to put a link down in the description to where you can check out that if you're interested. We go every year. Last year we had the the Squadland booth. It was a lot of fun. This year we're going to have like an, an actual legit like booth booth. We're going to, we're going to be uh, there and selling stuff and I'm going to have merch and me pods and squonkers. We're going to have some atomizers and drip tips and all just the good uh, the good fun Squadland stuff. So ECC I'm really stoked Joked about that. In fact, after ECC, uh, maybe I don't want to say it. Maybe I don't want. Maybe I don't want to give this away right now. After ECC, there may or may not be sort of a weekly live streaming Grim Green situation. I, I don't quite know what that looks like yet, but I'm really, really very excited about the possibilities of it. I love live streaming. I like going on other people's live streams, and I'd like to have my own live stream. I'd like to have the Grim Green live stream show, and I don't quite know what that looks like yet, but that's going be something that's coming up after ECC as well. I'm honestly just trying to put out as much quality content as I possibly can. I love doing reviews. We're going to have the reviews. We're going to have the vlog. It's not going anywhere. It might look a little bit different in the future, but the vlog is definitely not going anywhere. And then I'm excited about this possibility of adding a live stream to my YouTube in the future, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway, that was way too long of an explanation for this, but welcome. Welcome to the vlog. I'm going to do that thing where I put all of the timestamps down here. You can so you can see what we're in for, see what's there and what's missing. And right now, before we get too far into this vlog, I want to do that thing that I do, my new favorite thing that I do, where I hear from one of my subscribers. This is one of my longtime subscribers. I have very vivid memories of corresponding with this person in the past. And right now, I'd like to hear from the infamous Bobotron. What's up, Nick? <clears throat> Wondering if I can get a video shot out for me, my dog, Chloe. Chloe. My beautiful wife, Sarah, and uh, if you got a minute, I'd like to show you a couple things. My Growler collection, got that original G.I. Joe up there, and I got this uh, Pay Today Credit Tomorrow. I know we like Paps Blue Ribbon on this channel, but um, also I want to know if the squad's going to be at ECC Detroit in like mid-April. Mid Theory in with the dead rabbit. Let's keep on vaping. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. You, Bobotron, you are definitely shouted out. And I, if I remember correctly, I'm mispronouncing your name. It's not Bobotron, right? Am I wrong here? I kept calling you Bobotron, and I think you emailed me and was like, dude, bro, it's not Bobotron. But I still feel like I need to call you Bobotron. So Bobotron, yeah, you are definitely shouted out. Your dog, uh, Chloe, is amazing. I'm a dog. I love 
dogs. I love dogs. I like hanging out with dogs and I would love to hang out with your dog. And of course, we're going to shout out your wife, Sarah. Absolutely love the Growler collection. I love that G.I. Joe lunchbox. I was at uh, Universal Studios this last weekend with um, with Casey Pickle. It uh, was her birthday and she wanted to go to Universal Studios. We're big Harry Potter fans. And so we went to Harry Potter Land for the first time and I punched my light again. And we went to Harry Potter Land for the first time and it was unbelievable. It was so cool. So very cool. It made me really want to go to the Orlando, uh, you know, Universal Studios where the Harry Potter Land or the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is a little bit bigger, but it was, uh, it was a great time. Anyway, sorry. They had a uh, vintage Transformer lunch boxes there. And I was this close to not only buying a vintage Transformer lunch box, but I was this close to buying a wand. Yes. A grown ass adult buying a Harry Potter wand. I picked one up at least, you know, 16 times throughout the, throughout our time in Harry Potter land. I'm going to buy this wand. I'm going to buy Snape's wand. I like that. I'm going to buy this. And then I, you know, I'd go, okay, wait, what, what? No. Okay. I don't need to buy a wand right now. That's, that's a little bit ridiculous. Coming from the guy that owns multiple stormtrooper helmets and a Kylo Ren helmet that you can't see up here. And that's another part of redoing my office. I have a lot of cool stuff and toys that I bought that are simply off camera. You can't see them. You can see a stormtrooper helmet up here. You can see Kylo Ren helmet up here. I've just got cool stuff that I would like to actually be on video. But anyway, yes, we do like PBR here on this channel, and that's a very cool sign. Thank you so much for sending in that video, bro. You are definitely shouted out along with Sarah and Chloe and the G.I. Joe lunchbox. Oh, also, Bobotron, I realized I did not answer your question as to whether or not we were going to be in ECC in Detroit this April. Uh, chances are slim of that. I mean, very, very slim of that. April is my birthday, A, and uh, Vape Jam, UK. I'm going to be in the UK for a lot of April, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to go from the UK to San Diego to Michigan all within one month. I might actually collapse. I would love to go. I've heard Detroit ECC is an amazing show. I would love to go. Uh, chances of it happening uh, pretty slim. And if anybody else has any videos like that, quick shout out videos that they would like to see on this vlog, you can always send them over to nick at grimgreen.com. I may not be able to reply to every email I get, but I absolutely, absolutely read every email I get and I watch every video uh, that someone sends me. So send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com. I would love to hear from you. So what we're going to do right now is just real quickly talk about what I've been vaping. And it's not a whole lot of stuff. I did that thing that I do sometimes where I just tore everything down. Every vape item that I had set up in my entire house, I tore it all down, I cleaned it all out, and I set up a few things, like three or four things. Well, one thing I did not tear down was my gold recoil rebel combo with the Dreamer mech mod from Tenacious TX Vape, Times Vape. This has just been stellar. This is one of my daily bangers now. This is something that I will probably never break down. I have a feeling this is going to be in a lot of what I've been vaping simply because I love mech mods, I love drippers, and this combination together is one of my favorite mech mod dripper combos. I, I just think it's a fantastic vape. I've got it loaded up with that Fall Delight from Sage Beyond Vape, the six milligram nicotine salt juice that I love so much. It's a very nice, rich, and, and sweet, and delicious tobacco, and uh, I've just absolutely been loving it. I think I've talked about this before, but the build I have on here is a 22 gauge Nichrome Anarchist build. I did a eight wrap on a three millimeter. It came out to 0.15, and I'm running it with one of those good four tab, five tab, five tab. Oh, now I'm all confused about the tabs. Anyway, it's the good 30 amp iJoy batteries. I know I said in a recent review that they were 20 amp batteries. It was one of those things. I just misspoke. I've got eight years worth of vape gear up in my head and you'll have to forgive me if I don't remember that the iJoy batteries are 30 amps as opposed to 20 amps. At least I didn't say, oh, they're 40 amp batteries. At least I erred on the side of caution, but these iJoys are 30 amp batteries with a 0.15. This Dreamer Mech just hit it so well. I don't feel like I really need to build any lower than that. I still get a very nice, warm, and flavorful vape. 
So good. So good. Uh, another thing I've been vaping, uh, that's Asmodus. Stabwood. Minikin Boost. I, I'm really into this thing, and I haven't done a review for this. I should definitely do a review for this very soon, because this is one of my daily bangers as well. I got a K-Fun Light Plus on top with a bell cap that was very graciously, graciously gifted to me from one of my Patreon Cool Kids Club's Andrew. The K-Fun is his, like, daily banger, and he said, hey, I've got a spare bell cap if you're interested, and I said, I've never never had a K-Fun bell cap, and I would literally be overjoyed and honored to use a bell cap from you, sir. And it's here. It's still going strong. Again, this is one of those things. I li I I'm eight years into vaping now. I know exactly what I like, and having a reliable mouth-to-lung setup like this, K-Fun Light Plus bell cap on the Minikin Kodama is just a beautiful thing. This is loaded up with the Atlanta Peach Thief. Atlanta, what? Hi. Hi. Atlanta peach leaf. Sometimes, you know, I'm such a talker that sometimes I just get talking way too fast and it just turns into mush. I'm like, <laughs> Atlanta peach leaf uh, from the Namber Originals. It's a 50-50, 12 milligram juice. The mouth to lung is just fantastic. And like we demonstrated with that wake tank, dual 18650s on a higher resistance coil is just going to give you mountains of battery life. This is a single coil sitting right at like a 0.7. I've got it set to 17 watts and I love it. Uh, pardon me. I love it. I think this is a fantastic mouth to lung vape. Oh yeah. Fuck, that's good. Another mouth to lung vape I've been really hanging in there with is that Basal mod. That Basal kit or Basal kit from E-Leaf. Some people say Basal. Some people say Basal. I have no idea. B-A-S-A-L. The B-A-S-A-L kit from E-Leaf has been uh, one of my daily drivers as well. This is loaded up with uh, Spring Mint from the Salt Nix line. It is 20 milligram Salt Nick, I believe, and it still sometimes, very occasionally, makes me cough just a little bit. I don't acclimate well to like high nicotine salt nick stuff, but I really, really enjoy this spring mint flavor or sprig mint as we call it on the Culture of Clouds podcast. Really enjoy this spring mint flavor quite, quite a bit. And this little tank is banging. I'm still on my first coil head and it's still performing great. It's still giving me spectacular spectacular flavor and uh, it's just cool. It's just a cool little thing that I like using. Second to lastly, still heavily, heavily, heavily rocking this Wismec Luxotic BF box. Ah, uh, 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 I'm kind of having a little bit of an obsession with this damn thing. I absolutely love the way it feels in my hand. I love holding it and I love vaping this. I was vaping this initially with that little Tobina atomizer, but I decided to switch it up. I was getting, I don't know, a little bit uh, spit backy. I love the idea of that little Tobina, that little flavor banger, but it's so small that I was getting a little bit, uh, a little bit spit backy and the drip tip as well is a little bit narrow for my tastes. And I know you, you can change it out, but I like keeping that, that little Ultim look. I like the Ultim and the Ultim. I know. I, I just said I like Ultim, and I don't know exactly what's wrong with me. I do still think it looks like stabilized piss, but when you have a matching Ultim door on a matching Ultim drip tip with like a matte stainless steel RDA and a matte stainless steel body, I think it looks... uh. I don't know, acceptable. And plus, now I'm just trying to justify my flip-flopping. I like this honeycomb pattern a lot. I think if this was just straight, pure Ultim door, I would not enjoy it as much as now that it has this honeycomb pattern on it. It's a very slightly textured honeycomb pattern, and it's just a beautiful thing to hold and to use. This is loaded up with Smacks Lick It, which I simply cannot get enough of that juice right now. It's fucking wonderful. So I switched out the RDA on top. This comes from Alliance Vapor Tech. This is the Flav 22, which I honestly don't remember getting. I don't remember ever talking to anybody about this RDA, but I was going through some of my vape stuff and cleaning stuff out and rotating some things out of my inventory. And I came across this little box that just said Alliance Vapor Tech. And I thought, well, I don't even know what's in here. And so I opened it up and it was this cool little single coil flavor banger squonker RDA. And it's been working for freaking flawlessly on this BF box, the Luxotic BF box. I have a Fiends framed staple single coil in here and it's just been, uh, it's just been awesome.
And lastly, lastly, what I've been vaping is I set up my older matte, like soft stainless steel squid industries double barrel, and I put the Heracles three on it. This is, this is a st- stellar, stellar setup. This was a very much an afterthought setup. I had gotten a few of these Heracles 3s in and I knew instantly right away that I wanted to use them because I love the Sense coil heads. I think they make some of the best coil heads in the market. And so I thought I am definitely going to use that tank right away. And it's one of those things where I didn't know what mod to put it on. And I realized this is like a very first world reviewer problem, but I couldn't find a mod that I really wanted to put it on. I tried it out on a few things. I was running it on like my unregulated Titan for a while and I was like, no, nah, this definitely needs something regulated. And so as I was uh, cleaning some stuff out, I saw this and went, holy shit. I forgot how much I love that thing. It's just the original Squid Industries double barrel. This is the version 2.1, I believe. Uh, Heracles 3 from Sense on here. It uses those wonderful, wonderful Sense V-Jet coil heads. If you remember a few weeks ago from the vlog, I was really heavily rocking that Sense V-Jet, and I always said, oh, the mod itself isn't that great. The tank is okay, but the coil heads are really where it's at. Well, now I get to use those spectacular coil heads in a very, very cool, cool tank. It is a cloud chasing, flavorful tank. It's so cloud chasing that I like to turn my airflow down about halfway and I rock it at a little bit less of a wattage than I normally would if it was like a real full cloud chasing, cloud chasing tank or RDA, something like that. This is a 0.6 at 55 watts. It's filled up with uh, Savage e-liquid, no, ripe uh, uh, hang on. Yes, Straw Nanners from the Ripe Collection, Vape 100 Savage E-Liquid. And in the interest of full disclosure, Savage E-Liquid Savage e is a sponsor of the podcast. They pay us to advertise on our podcast, and they also provided us with juice to taste on the podcast. This was a juice that we had set up to taste on the podcast, and I liked it so much, I've been plowing through this 100 mil bottle like my life depended on it. I think this is a really banging flavor and it tastes very delicious in this Heracles 3. So yeah, that is what I have been vaping. Uh, what I would like to do right now, shit, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do these segments? I haven't really thought this through all the way. I don't know the order that I'm going to do them. I know that I put all the timestamps here, but I put those timestamps there after I'm already done with the vlog. And as of right now, I don't know how I'm going to put these segments all together. What I think I'd like to do right now is actually open up some vape mail. I've got some vape mail to open up, including a uh, smuggler's bounty box, a Star Wars smuggler's bounty box that I'm going to be opening along with my vape mail. And I think we're going to go back to the couch to right now open up some vape mail and not just open up some vape mail. We're going to open up some vape mail and we're going to set something up like we did with that Wismec Luxotic BF box. I'm going to set one thing up for my vape mail and we're going to do a little uh, first impressions talk about it kind of thing. So let's do that now. It's vape mail time. Whew. All right, cool. So we're, gonna, we're here to open some vape mail. I've got a bunch of vape mail. It's not like an excessive amount of vape mail like it is every week. Eh, eh, it's, yeah, it's kind of excessive. I'm really excited about it, though. There's a box in here from Cloud Chasers, Inc., which CCI, I haven't heard from them in what seems like forever. I honestly didn't know if they were still around or not, but there's a package here from them that I'm really excited to open, as well as a Star Wars Smuggler's Bounty box, which we're going to get to eventually. But this is the first one I want to open because I don't know if this is actually actually vape mail. I think this is something from one of my subscribers. Oh, these are some coils, man. Here, I don't, I'm not sure I'm going to read this whole note uh, on, on, the, on, on the video here. Uh, what you have in the bag is some of my coils. I am a small one-man operation. I handle everything. I appreciate, I specialize in mech coils, so that's what you have. Oh, cool, mech coils. I use Finich, Fin, Finch Witch. I use Finch Finch Witch, uh, a locally owned company. It's actually a custom stainless steel blend I've included for you to try. It's amazing stuff. It's all I use on my mech coils. All the guys at Finch Witch are amazing people, and I donate 10% of all of my coil sales to CASA. Anyway, sorry about my handwriting sucks. Thank you so much for everything, Nick. You're a fucking gem. I hope you enjoy this stuff from Doug, aka Big D, aka Deadworks. Ah, yes, Big D, the Big D. I remember you. 
from my Instagram live streams. Uh, for me, the best way to reach is Facebook. My name is Don Balazzo, or my group is Deadworks. Cool. I'll put some links down in the description, but uh, he sent me some coils. I got some coils. We were talking forth, back and forth about, uh, about coils, and he was telling me about his coils. That's kind of cool. Come on. <gasps> That's a pretty rad way to label your coils. Hello, my name is Deadwork. These are Comp Claptons, clocking it at a point oh nine. Got some other stuff here. Fused Claptons, staggered fused Claptons, aliens. We got the whole gamut. Oh, and he sent some wire as well. Okay, so it wasn't Fitch Witch. It was Fire Wire. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize, Big D. Your handwriting made it look like Fitch Witch, but it's actually Fire Wire. Fire. Fire Wire. Well, cool. Well, thank you very much. I'm, re I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Where is my knife? I just had it. I was just using it. Ha! Ah, you know, an open knife is not something you want to lose inside your office, especially on a couch that you're sitting on. As with all my DHL stuff, I'm not, I'm not sure who this came from. This... It's like a, it's like Russian dolls here. I got a box inside of a box. Steam. Oh, this is from 44 Inc. Oh, cool. Holy crap. I'm so excited right now. 44 Inc. Um, I don't know if you follow 44 Inc on Instagram, but you definitely could. You definitely should. He's got a super dope Instagram account. He happens to be one of my Yo Yo Way Cool Kids Club members. And I had recently got a billet box on tour and I have not been able to use it yet. So I went to the billet box website and I ordered some things that have not arrived yet. And he sent me all the way from Kuwait. He sent me uh, the RDA deck base for the uh, for for the billet box. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I have no idea how any of this works. I have not had a working billet box in years and years and years and years. This looks to be a little single coil guy. Really old school, little tiny little single coil guy. This is designed to be built and then pressed, uh, you know, inside into your billet box. Okay, I don't want to break this. It's a little bit, it's, it feels like this is a little bit on the fragile side. Oh, that's so cool. Fuck. Okay, that's so cool. I'm gonna need some time to, uh, I'm gonna need some time to figure this whole thing out. 44 Inc., if you're not too busy, maybe just a, a quick little, you know, tutorial on Instagram or something like that might be helpful, or I'll utilize YouTube. Steam Turner's Insider for my billet box. Overjoyed, thank you, 44 Inc. You are you are a stand-up dude. You've always been nothing but super, super cool to me, and, and I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that steam turners for my billet box. I might be able to get my billet box up and running soon, dude. Oh, kick ass. Oh my god. That's so fucking cool. Uh Wake Mod Co. sent over like four of the little foot kits. That is super, super rad. God, I almost feel like I should have a $2 sale very, very soon. Maybe even in this vlog for some of these wake little foot kits. Um, th th these kits are awesome. I haven't reviewed it yet, but these kits are awesome. Red and gold and black and blue and awesome. Thank you, Wake Mod Co. Um, I have one. I'm good to go. I got one. These are literally for uh, for the $2 sales. And there's a lot of confusion, and I'll just address this right now. There's a lot of confusion about how the $2 sales work. Where do I put up the $2 sales? Where can I get a $2 sale? A $2 sale nowadays is just a fancy term for a giveaway, you see. Because of the FDA, we have to charge a price. You have to charge a price for something so it's not technically a giveaway it is a two dollar sale i do them monthly on my patreon which is full at the moment i'm gonna be adding some more spots to the patreon i just wasn't sure uh how that was gonna work i, I capped it off i felt like i was i was pretty good i had something like 400 plus patrons and, and it's going great and they're all great people and so i just i just decided to cap those off and be like okay i'm nobody else for right now but i'll probably be open up some more spots in the future just because there's been such a demand for it which is great and that's where I usually post all of the two dollar sales is on my patreon I do some I do them sometimes not often but sometimes in vlogs as well and just because of the office remodel I'm doing this week I'm not gonna do a two dollar sale in this vlog but in the next vlog I'm gonna do a two dollar sale for these wake mod Co little foot 
kits. I'm going to have four $2 recipients of them. We're going to do that next week after, after all of the office remodeling nonsense has already happened. So continuing down the rabbit hole, we have the Kado Stealth. K-A-D-O Stealth. This looks to be a little mouth to lung, maybe sort of pod system happening right here. I kind of want to open this up and look at it. Oh wow, look at that thing. Wow, that is actually kind of, uh, that's actually kind of a cool little, very stealthy little mouth to lung guy. It kind of reminds me of the, you know, the, some of the other pod systems out there, like the, the Sauron Drop, the Sauron Air, things like that. This is the Kato, and it looks very cool. It feel it's got that nice, soft, rubbery sort of texture, and then there's a glossy stripe, and then a, and then a gunmetal sort of metallic aluminum stripe. And it looks like you have a pod system here that gets... Filled? Oh yeah, there's a big opening right there. You fill this up with your own juice. Oh fuck, that's cool, man. I actually kind of want to set this up uh, like as soon as I possibly can. This is going to be something that gets set up. We might be setting up two things today because I definitely want to test out this Kato Stealth. So it just looks cool. And this is again, this is one of those things. This is one of those things where I don't remember exactly talking to this company. It wasn't. I don't remember seeing this pod system, and I hope to be pleasantly surprised by it. And again, this is. One another one of those things. I got no idea what it is or where it's from. Oh, dang. Okay, well, I'm gonna show you guys this anyway. So this is something that uh, we are going to have at ECC this year. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I got with Smoking Vapor, I got with Me One, and we did some beautiful emerald green, grim green Me Pods. We're gonna have these at ECC, and then after ECC, they're gonna be on RecoilRDA.com, but these are special one-of-a-kind one-offs we we're the only ones that have this green color we're the only ones that are gonna have the grim green me pods I've been using my me pod like crazy lately and it's just all around very very cool turned out very very cool and these along with some other good fun stuff these are all gonna be uh, at our booth at ECC which I'm very very excited about let's do another one let's do this before we get to the Star Wars uh, you know, smugglers bounty box let's get through some more of this first this is Royal Mail this comes from the UK Okay. Is this my billet box stuff? Oh, is this my billet box stuff? Does that come from the UK? Oh, let's see. There's a bottle, so it could be squonky. Oh, I know what this is. Holy shit. What are the odds that I'm opening this in a vlog? This is the SQ Squonker. This is the Grim Green SQ Squonker from Signature Tips out of the UK. Holy crap. Oh, that's so fucking cool, dude. These turned out so rad. Silicone bottle, mechanical, single 18650. This is just a tiny little flavor banger sort of squonker. It's very much along the lines of, you know, that 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 Wismec guy, that Luna guy that I love so much. I've really fallen in love with this like lower wattage, flavorful squonking type of vaping. And this is, look at that. This is cool. Here, hang on. Yeah, dude, that looks so good. That turned out so rad. Fuck. Okay. That's cool. Green button. That is cool. That is a cool little squonker I am. I got one of these at the last uh, Vape Jam UK from Signature Tips and I got it home and mine was missing components so I never got to use it but I would take it out occasionally and fantasize about using it. I would hold it in my hand and be like, I wish I could use this. That would be great. That would be real cool if I could use this. And now I've got a functioning bitchin' little squonker and a matchy, matchy drip tip that's made out of the same material as the button. Okay, cool. Sorry, um, these are something, again, that we're gonna have at uh, ECC. We're gonna have these at the booth at ECC. I think it's booth 133. 33, 133 or 135, not really sure. I heard a rumor that we're gonna be by VGOD and that makes me pretty stoked. Okay, well let's just do this Smuggler's Bounty Box. I get these uh, every month and I've never opened one on video before and I love Star Wars, I like toys, I like talking about Star Wars and I like talking about Star Wars toys and so we're gonna open up this Smuggler's Bounty Box. They always include a slightly dorky t-shirt. All the t-shirts that I get from the Smuggler's Bounty Box 
are always eh, a little bit dorky. Like stuff I really wouldn't wear out in public. Last month, there was a very cool Qui-Gon Jinn t-shirt. And I don't like the prequels and I don't like the character of Qui-Gon Jinn, but I thought this t-shirt was hilarious and it became one of my like, uh, well, this is a shirt I'm just gonna sleep. This is a pajama shirt now. Looks like I have a Kylo Ren bobblehead uh, sitting in, uh, you know, from episode seven where he's looking at Darth Vader's helmet, except it's a little bobblehead uh, Kylo Ren. I don't know, that's actually kind of cool. I might wear that. Little, uh, bobblehead Kylo Ren t-shirt. I see, oh, this is all, this is prequely stuff. This is, this is very much prequely stuff, I can tell. Oh, that's cool. Oh, Star Wars Darth Vader pin. I'm gonna put that on my battle vest for sure. This is a Darth Maul bobblehead. So, you know, I don't like the prequels, man. I just don't like those movies. I don't want to watch them anymore. I don't like them. But... That doesn't mean I can't appreciate a Darth Maul bobblehead. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Look at that little Darth Maul guy. Look at his little bent, uh, his little bent lightsaber. It's bent right there, bent right there. Yeah, cool. That's fine. I'll put that on my desk. Little Darth Maul. It's not, it's not even a bobblehead. There's a spring there, but it doesn't bobble. A bobblehead is supposed to bobble, and this doesn't bobble. And I got a Count Dooku bobblehead. The only reason why I can actually appreciate this Count Dooku bobblehead is because of the actor that played Count Dooku. Christopher Lee, one of the one of the greats of all time, just one of the best actors of all time. I, uh, I, I hate the prequels. In fact, I really, really very much dislike the character of Count Dooku. But I love Christopher Lee, and I love that Christopher Lee played Count Dooku in the prequels. I think that's very, very cool. And so I like this for the set, for the, just for the fact that it's Christopher Lee and not necessarily the fact that it's Count Dooku. Oh, and lastly, inside this month's Smuggler's Bounty Box is a Darth Vader. That is very, very fucking cool. This is a Funko bobblehead Darth Vader double walled insulated tumbler. Ah, I love this. I'm going to continue to use it. I was wondering why there was a straw in the packaging before I got to the tumbler, I saw the straw and I went, why is there a straw in this? But that is super cool. I am so stoked on this. I'm unbelievably stoked on this. I consume a lot of water every single day and I'm usually drinking from like a mini growler and this is something uh, that I would be much more excited about. Oh, I put the straw in, in backwards. Stra straw is supposed to go in like this, right? So it doesn't, uh, so the straw doesn't fall out. Yeah, fuck yeah. I think that's super cool. I like this. I like this. Well, there you go. Smuggler's Bounty Box. And funny story, my Smuggler's Bounty Box actually comes to me every month. Uh, it was a Christmas gift. It was a Christmas gift about a year ago from Bonsai Vapors. I met John. I love Bonsai Vapors. I love those people. I think they're great people doing great things up there in the Pacific Northwest. But I had met uh, John from Bonsai Vapors at the very first VaporCon event that I did in 2014. Is that the first VaporCon was in 2014? That's crazy. Anyway, I organized an event in Reno, Nevada. Uh, VaporCon West it happened in two 2014, and when I was looking for uh, vendors to be there, Bonsai Vapors was one of the first people I hit up. I hit up John, and he said, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to be there. And so they came down, and they helped make that event uh, a very, very successful event. And ever since then, I've always very much respected not only John, but everybody at Bonsai Vapors. I think they do a really fantastic job. And so just out of the kindness of their heart, I was talking to John, and he was said he wanted to give me the a Christmas gift of a subscription to the Star Wars Smuggler's Bounty Box, and you know, what am I gonna say, no to that? It's Star Wars, man, come on. Anyway, let's get through some of this bait mail. I got two more boxes here, including the box from CCI Cloud Chasers Inc. I have a feeling there could be something in that CCI box that I would like to set up. I traditionally, I used to really like a lot of the CCI stuff that they did. In fact, that mouse tank, M-A-U-S, the CCI mouse tank, that was one of my favorite uh, sub -ohm tanks that I use. Vulcan Brothers. Okay, this is from Cloud Chasers Inc., but there's no CCI branding or anything on this. It is, uh, oh, okay. No, this isn't the CCI box. 
What am I doing? I thought I had opened the CC. I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. This comes from Oh My Goth. This comes from Riza. I think I'm saying that correctly. She said, Hi Nick, I finally got around to organizing a little package for you. You should find include a uh, Vulcan uh, 1 mods, Vulcan Alpha RDA, Brass Vulcan 1 mod, Vul uh, Vulcan Alpha RDA, three squonk pins, uh, juice, and oh, a snapback. I got a snapback to wear in the vape mail. It wouldn't be a vape mail set. I mean, if I didn't have an alternative hat to wear. Yeah, okay, there you go. Kind of looks like a sports team to me. I like that looks like a like a very sports teamy thing. I'm not a sports ball guy, so to me that looks like a, a sports ball team. Oh yeah, you should give me some stuff to, to give away as well. She says the website isn't quite live yet. Uh, but in case you look them over before, here's a little bit of info. This mod is mainly for 2700s. It'll accept an 18650 with a sleeve. However, it does make the throw long. We're planning a version 1.5 by summer, which may be mainly geared towards 18650 functionality. The RDA might catch you by surprise. It's supposed to be a flavor machine, so the air flader, airflow is tighter than you might expect. We describe the flavor cap as restricted lung hit and the cloud cap as a slightly tight lung hit. Also included two sets of aliens from our team coil builder, Mike, the coilologist, so you can get them set up. Oh, fucking yeah. Awesome. I love, oh my goth, she's just a fantastic, a wonderful person over there in the UK. We hope, really hope you dig our vibes. Tony and Stu, the owners, were super nervous about sending you stuff, especially Stu because he's such a big fan. Oh, Stu, you don't have to be nervous, bro. Thank you. Oh my goth. I appreciate that. That's very, very cool. Well, let's see what's in here. Yep. Looks like some juice. Looks like some TPD compliant juice. Rich custard, warm bakery. Oh, oh that sounds pretty good. Oh, oh my goth. You, you crazy person. You know, you know exactly. You know me well. Lady. <laughs> I've never called anybody lady before. But yes, Ryza, awesome. Oh shit, that's shiny. Holy crap, I don't want to get my fingerprints anywhere near this monster. That just looks beautiful. I'm gonna try to show you guys a, a non-fingerprinted, non-scratched version of this mech mod right now because it looks so nice. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty. That is just a shiny, pretty tube. This has got a button right there on the bottom. It's a nice, smooth button. Engraved, got vent holes along the top, which is where vent holes should be. Hybrid 510 connection. Interesting. I have a feeling this mod is going to be a fingerprint magnet because it already is a fingerprint magnet, but it looks beautiful. Oh, that's the switch throw. Okay. Very nice. Very nice, smooth threads on this. That is quite the switch that's coming out here. Oh, okay. That's uh, that's for the 18650? Does that come off? Oh, it does. Just pulls right off. And it actually has like a little bit of a locking feature on it. I mean, not a little bit of a locking feature. It's got a full on locking feature on there. And this uh, 18650 sleeve is just pressure fit in there. It kind of looks like a big shotgun shell or like a big artillery round. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a gun guy very much like I'm not a sports ball guy so i'm just assuming anybody else does that kind of look like some sort of artillery shell <laughs> that's cool 2700 right on well right on thank you i'm excited to try out these mech mods i kind of want to look at the other one i kind of want to look at the blemished one she said she included a blemished one that was serial number triple six and that's why i want to look at it yeah see this one grim hashtag ding life enjoy this is serial number triple six Oh my goth. I'm excited. See what's going on here. Oh yeah, it's, it's basically just the same thing, right? Except you said there's a there's a blemish on it. There's a ding on it. I don't see any blemishes on here at all. In fact, this is the one I'm definitely going to be using because it's serial number 666. This is the Vulcan 1 mech mod and it's supposed to go along with the Vulcan Alpha RDA. So we're going to take a look at this. This might be something I set up today. Oh yeah. Oh dang. That, uh, that just looks pretty on there. Oh, they did it. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit, uh, I don't want to say a little bit recoily, but it's got a smaller deck and it's got a bigger uh, outer diameter chamber. It's thick. The walls on this chamber are thick. Thick. Trying to see if they angled down their airflow. It kind of looks like they did, which means it's going to be super nice and smooth. Okay, first little thing here. Oh my goth. Not sure about these uh, O-rings on the bottom. They feel nice when they're nice and dry over time. When those get some moisture, 
That could be a thing. Could get a little sloppy on there. Anyway, fuck, that looks cool. That kind of just looks like a, a, a big a, a big shiny dildo. Oh, yeah, okay, I get it. I see how that's a restricted lung hit, definitely. Let's look at this other top cap. This is the one that's going to be even smaller airflow, right? Oh, yeah, it is. That's tighter airflow. This one's a little bit more open. Wow, that's good. Okay, um, I kind of want to. I kind of really want to set this RDA up and vape on this mech mod right now. But before I decide that, we do have to open the last box. CCI Cloud Chaser Zinc. Thank you, Oh My Goth Mech Mod Alpha Vulcan Alpha RDA uh, Vulcan One Mech Mod. I believe Is that correct. Did I get all my terminology correct? Now the Vulcan One Mod and the Vulca Vulcan Alpha RDA. And it's not spelled Vulcan like uh, in Star Trek Vulcan. It's spelled Vulcan, V-U-L-K-A-N, brothers. Vulcan brothers. So I'm assuming that could be their last name? Anyway, cool. Cool, 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 cool. I kind of want to set up this shiny mech. All right, Cloud Chasers Inc., what do you got for me? He said he was sending an RDA, like a singular RDA, and clearly this box is not for a singular RDA. Maybe it's just for bubble wrap. So far, it's just bubble wrap. Oh, okay, and I got a Cloud Chasers Inc. hat, which means I need to switch my hat to the Cloud Chasers Inc. hat. Sorry, Vulcan brothers. But that's the rule. That's the rule of the vlog. If you send a hat, I have to wear the hat during the uh, during the unboxing. So here we go. There is a vape mat. And not a vape mat vape mat. It's a, it's a, it's not a vape mat branded vape mat, is what I'm trying to say. Just say cloudycollabs.com. CCI. Like I said, I have not heard from CCI in a very long time. And this is the Centurion V2. I used to uh, regularly speak with Kurt from CCI, like very, very regularly. It was like a regular thing that I did. And then all of a sudden he was just gone. I think I still have his cell phone number. I should try to text him. But then, uh, yeah, Kurt was just gone. And then I didn't hear anything from CCI. I didn't see any activity on the CCI Facebook group. And then out of the blue, kind of out of nowhere, uh, they just uh, hit me up on Instagram and said, hey, we want to try out this thing. Oh, good lord. That is a giant, that is a honking RDA. Holy fuck balls, that's big. Centurion V2 by Cloud Chasers Inc. This is just a humongous cloud chasing two post RDA. I can see down in there, it's a big, big two post RDA. It looks to be a clamp style system in there. Shit. I really need to get this top cap off. Ah, yes. There you go. Looks perfectly at home with a giant gap on top of that SQ <laughs> squonker. Oh. Yeah, it's just a big two post clamp deck system. This is going to fit big coils. This is going to fit like four and a half millimeter coils or even like five millimeter coils. I could definitely easily see that fitting in here. Yeah, of course, the airflow's just like breathing in oxygen, just air. There's no resistance. Which truly and honestly, it's not my favorite thing, man. Anyway, well, there you go. Now, see, I'm not so sure, sure I want to set this up. I really would rather kind of set up that Vulcan mech and the Alpha RDA along with that pod system that I had opened initially that I don't remember the name of. It's been so long. Yes, the Kato Stealth. So that's what we're going to do. I am going to clean this whole area up. That was the last of the vape mail, by the way. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I'm going to clean this whole area up. I'm going to throw away all my garbage. I'm going to set this up and I'm going to set up that mech mod, that silver mech mod RDA combo as well. So what I'm going to do right now, clean up, set this up. We'll jump to the desk and we'll continue over there. Yeah. Well, all right. So I cleaned up. I got something set up before we talk about what I set up. I set up two items. I set up the mech mod and I set up the, the other, what was the thing? The pod system thing. Before we get to those and before we get to the random juice tasting, I did want to cover some news and advocacy. So let's do that now. News and advocacy advocacy yeah and the first thing i wanted to talk about was your feedback from last week's viewer not not viewer mail last week's vape mail not a vlog vlog video that i did where we were talking about lost art liquids and i was honestly put off a little bit by the lost art liquids branding and that's really just due to the climate of the vape industry that we're in now every bottle that i get every bottle of liquid that comes across my desk i do i, I do the health committee 
test with it. I imagine that there's some sort of like California Health Committee meeting, which there have been multiple, multiple ones in the past, as well as, you know, uh, special congressional, you know, uh, meetings where they have the public come in. And I remember when H, what was the old, what was the old one? What was the old one? What was the really old one in California? SB 140. When SB 140 was going through, uh, multiple, multiple dozens of members from the vape industry came out to speak, whether they were for or against it. I know that CJ was there. I remember Cam being there. I remember the CKS guys being there. And so in those types of meetings, I always picture someone official, a politician or a health committee member holding up a bottle and asking people to defend it. Because that's something that happened in the past. In fact, Lost Art Liquids, they were included by name in an anti-vaping commercial. It's something I posted on Twitter as well as on my Facebook not too long ago, but Lost Art Liquids is mentioned by name in an anti-vaping commercial, and I get really defensive of vaping, not only because it's kept me tobacco-free for the last eight years. Oh shit, it's almost nine years. When's my vape anniversary? It's uh, January 27th. Oh wow, it's actually this Friday. Okay, so that's my nine-year vape anniversary. So I get really uh, protective, I guess, a little bit defensive of vaping, of the vapor industry, and when I see certain bottles that I go, oh, health committee people are not gonna like that. Or I see a bottle and I say, politicians are not going to like that. You have to understand these politicians and these health committee members, they have the ability to make what we're doing either legal or illegal. And I would like all of this, vaping in general, to remain safe, legal, and accessible for adults. And so when something comes along that isn't necessarily like IP theft, there's no IP theft going on on those labels. There's no cartoons on those labels even. Maybe I was getting a little bit too defensive about it, you know what I mean? But anyway, I asked for your feedback and your feedback is what I got, so we're gonna go over those now. And not super surprisingly, uh, a lot of people disagreed with me, which is, which is great. That's one of my favorite things ever. I really love having conversations about things that I might not necessarily agree with. That's the only reason that I brought up Lost Art Liquids in the first place is because they sent me a package and I said in the last video, this isn't going to be like a Lost Art Liquids bashing session, I genuinely, genuinely want some feedback about these bottles because I don't know how I feel about them. Uh, Tact D left a comment and said, The Lost Art branding to me looks sloppy. I definitely wouldn't purchase, let alone that unicorn puke sounds horrible. And we have enough issues trying to vape that would definitely turn heads and cause issues. Flickstro's comment said, The tagger style lettering on those Lost Art bottles would go a lot better with a brick wall background instead of that circus carnival fart noise. And again, this wasn't uh, uh, necessarily critiquing the art or the style behind it. A lot of the colors that they use are, are really over the top and loud and gaudy and uh, maybe a little bit tacky. But that's not the important part of this. The important part of this is could these bottles hold up to a health committee meeting where someone from the health committee meeting holds up space rocks and goes, tell me how this isn't supposed to appeal to kids. I'm not trying to be the police of the industry. That's ridiculous. I would never do that. What I like to do is get these conversations started as a topic of discussion so maybe we can self-regulate ourselves. Maybe we don't need state and local and federal governments regulating these things for us. Maybe we can do it ourselves ourselves. Tannis is awesome said, personally, I have no problem with their branding. I love the graffiti art look personally, but that's just coming from the standpoint of someone who is super into that scene. I might be mistaken, but one of the creators of the juice is an artist who makes the label designs. Josh said, gummy glue and slaughter pops are all right. I don't see an issue with the branding. Ty said, I personally don't have a problem with lost art branding. I think the slaughter pop is quite good. Italian Vapor said, I DIY. That said, I agree the packaging appeals too much to kids. Justin B. He said, Lost Art Liquid branding just makes vaping look childish, like something immature, not something adults do. Blessed European says, those Lost Art branding looks like a 12-year-old with ADHD drinking too much Monster Energy has designed it. Liam said, personally, I think the Lost Art branding would be totally fine if it wasn't for the current situation with the FDA and so on. I think brands need to be really careful and tread lightly and with caution at this present time, and it seems to be a little irresponsible, but hey, that's just me. Cheers from the UK. So yeah, a lot of interesting comments. Uh, I don't 
don't necessarily agree with all of them or disagree with all of them, but I want to wrap this up. I think this was summed up perfectly by one of my subscribers named Jay Manigan 17 He said, I think many of us have become a bit too sensitive in regards to labeling. If it's not cartoon characters or trademark infringement, it's fine. Yes, the graffiti labeling is a bit polarizing, but not out of line. It does appeal to a rather large subset of the community, which is fine. Younger vapors of legal smoking age are a completely legitimate market. We have to fight the urge to dismiss anything we've decided doesn't look like it's aimed at middle-aged white-collar vapors. Let's resist the urge to get all witch hunty if something comes in bright colors. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree with you. Absolutely, I agree with you. At the end of the day, this is very graffiti looking. It's very bright colors, but that doesn't mean anything. There are lots of people out there that like graffiti looking stuff. They like bright colors, and this juice is gonna to appeal to them. This juice is going to appeal to adults. And maybe it's just me being real old and crotchety. And I have a feeling a lot of the politicians are the same way. They're just real old and crotchety. And ultimately where I land with this Lost Art Liquids is, yeah, it's big, it's bright, it's bold, but there's no IP theft going on. There's no copyright infringement going on. And there's no cartoon characters on this. J Mangan 17 is absolutely correct. Me as a rational person, I agree with him. That's how I I view this as well. The problem isn't with me. The problem isn't what the vape community thinks of it. The problem is truly what the legislators and what the health committee people think about it. And even just looking at these two bottles right here, I've lost our liquid space rocks, which we're going to be doing for our very random juice tasting. And then I have a bottle of the fall delight. And really there's not a whole lot of difference between these packages. I could honestly see both of these labels coming under pretty heavy scrutiny from politicians, even though I feel feel the fall delight is much more toned down a little bit more adult it still has big colorful swirls on it and honestly this fall delight looks like it could be the packaging of like a candy product which is the same thing that happens with lost art liquids it looks like it could be the packaging to a candy product and ultimately it's going to be up to the consumer to decide which products they want to enjoy that's the free market that's what i'm a fan of and this isn't necessarily a conversation conversation that has to end right now where it's like, okay, now I approve of Lost Art Liquids. Because some of those bottles I'm not a huge fan of, but ultimately, like I said before, without running the risk of my repeating myself, there's no IP theft, there's no copyright infringement, and there's no cartoon characters on. There's no Pokemon on here, there's no Rick and Morty on here, there's not the Avengers or Transformers or anything like that on here. There's nothing on this label that specifically targets kids. There are things on this label that specifically target a certain group of maybe younger vapors and me being crotchety old grim green I go I'm all eh, crotchety Bruh. but I get it I mean I get it I said that last week I get it I understand this branding it is kind of cool but I worry with all of my worries that some lost art liquids bottle or some other bottle of liquid is going to end up in a health committee meeting being held up by a senator going explain this bottle explain how this isn't marketing to kids and we have to be the ones to defend it. So yeah, that's where I'm going to leave that. But thank you everybody for your feedback. I like the fact that we all have kind of eh, maybe slightly different opinions on certain things, but we can still all sort of communicate rationally. That's one of my favorite things is getting feedback from my subscribers and especially getting feedback from my subscribers that kind of change my point of view on things. I like that. I like, I like helping each other out like that. So with that said, yes, Lost Art Liquid Space Rocks is the juice we're going to be tasting right after this in the very random juice tasting. And I'm actually really excited about it because that one, more than any of the other ones, people said was a really good liquid. So what the fuck? I'll give it a try. And another thing that's going on in Utah right now, Washington City in Utah is, uh, is they're not, they're not banning vaping. They're actually banning vape shops. They're banning what they call specialty tobacco shops within the city of Washington City in Utah, from which I understand there are a few vape shops there already, somewhere between three to four vape shops in Washington City, Utah, and those will be allowed to maintain 
their, their storefront. They're going to be allowed to stay open and run their business, but they are completely banning any new vape shops opening, or as they call them, specialty tobacco shops, um, even though there's no tobacco in it. Especially specialty tobacco shops are, are banned. They, they cannot open. You cannot get your business license in, in Utah, in the city of Washington City, Utah, if you're going to open a vape shop. And a lot of what the people, honestly, in Utah are doing is using the same really very tired lame duck arguments things like well we've seen a we've seen a huge spike 350 percent in uh, in teenagers experimenting with vaping which we all know the best way to keep teenagers from doing something is to tell them that it's not allowed they say things like oh it's a health related issue it's a it's a it's a kid appealing issue the flavors the flavors appeal to kids that's my least favorite argument from the antis ever is that flavors appeal to kids. I would love to ask some of these senators and some of these Congress people that are against vaping because of the flavors if they ever ordered dessert ever. Have you ever just, you know, eaten a Snickers bar? No, you've never even eaten a candy bar? I just got some Kinder Buenos from the UK. I am a grown ass curmudgeon old adult and I cannot wait to tear into those. So flavors appeal to adults and I don't know why they keep using that argument. And they also use a lot of really dumb arguments like, oh, well, you know, in those, uh, in those vape things, you can use other things like marijuana, which <laughs> marijuana is legal in a lot of states now. Vermont just legalized it. Utah, come on. That is not, a, that is not an argument that you can stand on. And even more annoying than the flavor thing is they use these old, outdated statistics when they say, oh, well, you know, teens who try vaping are four times more likely to smoke traditional tobacco cigarettes, even though there's actually literally zero evidence that shows that. Utah is not in favor of tobacco harm reduction. All they want to do is ban everything, including new vape shops. I don't know if there's a way to get around this. I don't know if there's anybody in Utah, any advocacy groups or anything in Utah. I don't know if there's a Utah Smoke Free Association. I didn't see a call to action on this. It kind of just happened. And that's a huge bummer for the vapors in Utah. And even when we were on the vape tour and we went through Utah, we were not allowed to vape inside the vape shops in Utah. That's the first time in my life I have ever experienced something like that. Utah absolutely needs needs a smoke-free association in an attempt to, you know, combat this legislation that's happening in Utah. But anyway, I'm going to put a link down in the description to where you can read this full article about Utah. If you're a vapor in Utah and you want to organize some advocacy stuff, just just do it. Just get out there and do it. There's no rule book. You just get out there and you organize people and you start combating this type of legislation. It's a thing that, that most anybody can do. In fact, I think that anybody could do it. But that's ultimately, uh, you know, just wow, just a huge bummer for Utah. Um, and the last thing, the last news that I wanted to talk about is the guy that vaped a Tide Pod. Now this ended up everywhere. This was on LAD Bible. That's where it started. It was all over a bunch of viral websites. It was on Maxim.com. It was literally everywhere and people were using it. I mean, these, these news outlets were using it very much as like a clickbaity thing. It's a lot of things like this guy tried to vape a Tide Pod and it did not go well. And so your average idiot on Facebook is going to click on that and, and, and read it just because of the clickbaity title. Well, after all of this happened, after his whole video Video went viral. He took the video down and he uploaded an apology video. And I can't find that apology video on his Instagram now. I wish with all of my wishes that he had left it up. But when I watched that apology video, he seemed very sincere to me. You could tell that he had fucked up and he knew that he had fucked up. He said in the apology video that he didn't drip the Tide Pod into his atomizer. He vaped it behind it, which I don't have the video to watch, but uh, I can kind of believe that. I don't really think a sane person would puncture a Tide Pod 
and actually vape it. We are here in 2018 having a campaign trying to get people to stop eating laundry detergent. So I definitely wouldn't put it past anybody to actually drip it into their atomizer, but I don't think he did. And like I said, his apology video seemed very sincere to me. But when people saw this video and how viral it had gotten, people got mad. There were campaigns on Instagram to get this guy kicked off of the V-God team. People were calling out V-God saying, hey, one of your team members is making us look like fucking idiots. There was a lot of rage going around and the news cycles in 2018 in the internet age are so quick. They just quick and pass. It was a flash in the pan. You can still Google guy vapes a Tide Pod and find a bunch of articles about it, but the original video is gone. He deleted deleted it, thankfully. And then he did the apology video, which I wish he would have left up. And he's still on Instagram doing his tricks. He's a really good tricker. He's still lighting his shit on fire, which I'm not in love with, but one step at a time, I guess. The first step is to stop vaping Tide Pods. And then the second step, I guess, would be to stop lighting your shit on fire. But again, I'm not the police of the vape industry. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna reprimand people. That's ridiculous. I just want us all to be really aware of what's going on. And ultimately where I land on this is yeah, this guy fucked up. He did something really very stupid and he knows it. He uploaded an apology video, which I believe to be sincere, and he took the original video down. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, the damage is already done, but ultimately the damage was fleeting. It was small. It was a quick little viral burst and, and now it's kind of gone again. And so if you are out there and you have an Instagram or you have a YouTube with a real big following or you have social media with a real big following, you have have a big platform and you kind of kind of have to be aware of what you're doing. Think about what you're doing before you do it. I think Vinyl and Vapor said it really well when he made a post about it and he says, please do not negate the hard work of people trying to save the exact thing that got you to where you are. Here are a few questions to ask yourself before you post. Am I using the platform I have acquired responsibly? Will this harm the image of said culture understanding the witch hunt for regulation and control of this technology? Is what I'm doing hard harmful to myself, the people following me, or the industry which has rewarded me for my abilities. Mistakes happen and judgment is skewed by the glimmer of likes and views. Post responsibly. It's an instant serotonin rush. Take a minute. If it seems like a bad idea after 60 seconds, it is. And I very much agree with that. And I'm not going to go hold a grudge against this guy because like I said, watching his apology video, I do feel like he was very sincere and I don't think we'll be seeing him doing anything that ridiculous ever again. I honestly think he's learned his lesson. And just as some advice to, like I said, everybody out there that has a platform, just use your platform responsibly and realize that the stuff, the content that you're putting out, people really listen to. People take it to heart. And if you're doing dumb things, then yeah, people, especially people in the vape community, are definitely going to call you on as I would expect them to. If I had done the same thing, I would expect loads of rage and pitchforks and witch hunts after me. I've been doing YouTube videos for nine years now, and I've done my fair share of plenty, my fair share of dumb things. And what you do is you learn from them and you move on. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of what I got right now for news and advocacy, not a whole slew of stuff, but some some important stuff. So what we're going to do right now is we are actually going to vape the things that I set up from the vape mail and I, I, I actually don't have a, a bumper for this. So I'll just do one of those blurry transitions. <laughs> okay, so I set up this. I set up this pod system, the Kato Stealth, and it's, it's an interesting little pod system, right? You pop open the bottom here, there's a little rubber grommet on here, and there's a pretty big oval-sized opening. I just squeezed a whole mess of juice in there and then I noticed how it set up. The tank is on one side and the coil head is on the other side and only one of the coil head wicks is going into the tank. In a lot of other pod systems like the Sauron Air or the Sauron Drop or the or the Mi Pods, the air, the, the wicks are in the tank on both sides. So you have wicking action coming in from both sides. On this particular tank you only have wicking action coming in from one side. And so I have 
had to do that thing where you kind of cover the airflow from the bottom with your finger and then you you inhale through the mouthpiece and you kind of create a vacuum in there. You kind of pull some of the juice in because I filled it up and I did that a few times and I took one full toot on it and it was nothing but dry silica wick and it didn't, uh, it, it did not, uh, it did not taste good. So I did that a couple more times. You kind of got to get the juice flowing in there, but now I can put it all together. Little mouthpiece is just over on this side. There's a little slot over here. There's going to be a little blue LED indicator that lights up. The draw on this is very, very stiff, and it does one weird thing that you'll probably notice as soon as I vape it. It keeps going for just a split second after you're done inhaling. The thing that can make or break a pod system, in my opinion, is how quickly that auto switch activates. This one activates right away, very, very quickly, but it also stays on for just a split second, just a hair after you're done vaping. You kind of get that, uh, you know, you kind of get that, 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 crackly sound happening when you pull your mouth away from it. But I loaded this up with 18 milligram uh, Cartimator Crush. It's a 50-50 PGVG uh, strawberry pink champagne flavor that I've been vaping for, I mean, for years, for years and years and years now. In this pod, it tastes good. It doesn't taste amazing, but it tastes good. I can definitely taste my juice. It's giving me a wicked throat hit because of that 18 milligram. I do really like the way this switch activates instantly, and I actually really like the draw on this. It's a very, very stiff draw. Even just comparing it to something like the Mi Pod has a very kind of more open draw. I still do mouth to lung on it, and I like a little bit more of an open mouth to lung draw. It's great, it hits great, and it tastes great. This has uh, at least an order of magnitude stiffer draw than the Mi Pods. And it is quite nice, and this feels very cool, very small, slim, and cool in the hand. Um, there's no buttons or anything. There's no on-off switch. There's no way to turn the LED on or off. But it is kind of a cool little uh, stealthy little pod system guy. And I'm really glad I set it up. I want to use this a lot. Then the other thing I set up was the Vulcan 1 mech mod along with the Vulcan Alpha RDA. It's a very simple two-post design. It's got two big flathead screws in there. I had no problem installing the coils. I installed those Deadwork Aliens 0.12 dual coil. Really simple, easy install. Really easy to wick. I loaded it up with uh, Vigilante Skull and Crossbones because I really love this juice and I was going through my closet the other day and I realized, well, shit, I got a couple bottles of this juice. I was rationing it earlier. I was rationing it, which is why there's only a few mils left in here. I like this juice so much that I was rationing it and I found out, I discovered that Russ had sent me two more bottles of it, so I'm good. Let's vape this shit. It does have a goon, uh, you know, 5, 8, 10 compatible drip tip on top, so of course the first thing I did was throw in one of my favorite DHD nub tips. The fit is fine. It's not amazing, but it sits in there and fits in there fine. It doesn't come off like in your mouth. I can't, I can't pull it out with my lips, but I also wouldn't hold it from the drip tip. <gasps> or maybe I would. Anyway, uh, it's an interestingly designed mech. For some reason, I can't get it to fire if my battery is positive side up, which is really confusing to me because the vent holes are on the top. And as we learned from Battery Mooch, all of our batteries, all of our cells that we use for vaping vent directly from the top. And so having the vent holes in the top, I assumed, okay, well, the positive side's going to go up. And so I screwed in the switch, which is a telescoping switch. Snug, snug, snug. There's the switch right there. It's unlocked. And when I press it, oh, it's firing now.
Okay. Wow, that's just really, uh, really super very confusing. It was not firing before, I promise. It wasn't firing before. But now it appears to be firing, so I'm just going to hit it a few times. It's a magnetic switch on the inside, two opposing magnets. And then the contact on the bottom is kind of this squared out contact that comes to two little peaks. So it's hitting your battery in two spots evenly every time. And because of the way that the switch assembly telescopes in here, and because of the way that the switch works, unlocking it and locking it, you kind of end up with these little segments down here at the bottom, which truly and honestly, I think I think it looks pretty cool. But like I said, I got some aliens in here, 0.12, iJoy 2700, 30 amp battery, and uh, the, uh, yeah, the uh, skull and crossbones on the inside. The airflow is spectacularly smooth and quite, quite restricted. Even with the biggest airflow cap, it's still a restricted lung hit. It's nice. It's a really very nice vape. It just feels real nice, real nice in the hand. And that like pearly aqua DHD nub tip on there just really makes this look very cool in my opinion. I really like holding it. I really like holding mech mods. It's not ergonomic like that Dreamer mech that I love so much, but it's a very traditional straight tube mech mod that fits real well in my hands. And I like that it has a locking feature. I like being able to screw this switch down, set this down, and you can put some pressure on this and it's just not gonna fire. It's locked. And that is a really good safety feature to have in a mech mod where the user is the safety. You can give it like, I don't know, one, two, three spins out. Now will it fire? It's not firing. It's not firing, Ryza. What's happening? Four, Five spins out? Ah, there we go, now it's firing. So yeah, you gotta unlock it a good way to get it to fire. But even with that said, the magnets in here are very strong. I can set this down and it's not gonna fire under its own weight. The locking feature on these types of mech mods come in really handy when you're storing it or for portability reasons. Like you would lock this if you were gonna throw it in a backpack or a purse or your pocket even. Just lock it up. And then when you're vaping it, you can unscrew it. When it's sitting on your desk, you can unscrew it. When it's sitting on your coffee table in your house, you can leave it unscrewed. And the, and the stainless steel, this really polished, chromey stainless steel really reminds me of my old silver bullet mods that I used to just love so much. So maybe I'm feeling a little bit of nostalgia for this type of particular bright, you know, shiny, chromey stainless steel finish. I just really like it. I find it very aesthetically appealing. And while we're here, I'm going to use the smaller air cap as well. The one that's uh, the one that's more more of a restricted lung hit. And I better juice up my coils while I got the top off too. I will say that the one downside I've noticed so far is the O-rings on the top cap are very. I mean, I wouldn't hold this by the top cap if there's lubrication. If there's a juice on your O-rings, I'm gonna do a little science right now. I'm gonna try to hold this from just the top cap and see what happens. Okay, maybe, yep, the O-rings on the base don't uh, don't hold very well at all. They, this just kind of goes on and off real, real easily. And for some reason on this stricter airflow cap, my nub tip doesn't fit. It doesn't even fit in there at all. It just uh, kind of wobbles around. That's really bizarre. Oh, it's because there's no O-ring in this one. Okay, hang on. I need to install an O-ring on this one. There's an inner O-ring on the top cap that holds the drip tips in. Are these differently sized? No, oh, they look the same. All right, let me put this in real fast. Oh yeah, good Lord. Okay, that's so much better. Nub tip fits in so much better with that O-ring. In fact, I can grab the nub tip and pull this off and it pulls the whole top cap off. The O-rings on the nub tip are stronger than the O-rings on the deck. But let's try out this more constricted airflow. Wow, restricted lung hit, but wow, good flavor. Wow, good flavor. As restricted as that is, I really like the flavor I'm getting from this top cap. Wow, that is great. That is just some beautiful flavor happening right there. Bleh. And even though this is a two post, you can still kind of bleh your juice in there under most. Oh. I apologize. That was uh, that that was over the line. 
okay? I mean, even for me, that burp was over the line. And I don't even remember what I was talking about. That burp threw me off so hard. Oh yeah, okay, I was talking about blowing your juice. So you can still kind of blow your juice even though it's a two-post design. I was able to blow my juice on like the old Dotmon Petries, which were a two-post, and I'm able to blow my juice on the two-post Kennedys that are still out there. It is a possibility to do. Oh, good Lord, I wish those O-rings were better on the bottom. Seriously, these O-rings are like, are like nothing. It's just going on and off. Like, like there's mine was might as well not even be O-rings on there. Oh, that's a huge bummer. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's rough. It sucks. You know what? It sucks. I know. Being a person that creates products and putting them out there for the world to just tear apart. I know it sucks listening to someone go, ah, this product, uh, it's not good. It's not my favorite thing. You, inside, you kind of go. Ugh. But I worked really hard on that, you know? And it's one of those things, like just because you worked real hard on it, doesn't mean people are gonna like it. I've known of Oh My Goth. I've known Risa for a very long time. She's always been a huge supporter of me. And ultimately, I'm not doing anybody any favors if I go, oh yeah, these O-rings are loose, but you know what? It's fine. It's cool. It's fine. I actually like it that way. You gotta be honest. You're not doing anybody any favors if you're not being honest, right? And honestly, the flavor from this cap is banging. Dang, 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 that is nice. So yeah, cool. All right, well, we vaped those, we set them up, we vaped them. Uh, it's gonna come down to the end here. I'm gonna go ahead and end this, but not before I do a very random juice tasting. It's time, whoops. I was trying to be real fancy there and like throw the bottle and catch it, but I'm, I'm, I have no coordination. It's time to do a very random juice tasting and the very random juice tasting we're gonna be doing is Space Rocks from Lost Art Liquids. So what I have set up is a freshly wicked nudge RDA, the 24 millimeter version, sitting on top of my blue limited edition. I get a lot of questions about this mod, the Squid Industries double barrel that's blue and speckled and has a squid on it. It's one of my most favorite mods just of all time. I love it, absolutely love it. For the way that I vape, it's almost a flawless mod. And I have no idea where this blue one came from, where it was ever for sale, who created it, what, you know, what it was for. It was just one that I got directly from Squid Industries and I have no answers for you. I'm just as confused as you are because I've never seen these on the website. I've only seen like the matte stainless steel and then like the matte black. So stop asking me about it. I'm just kidding. I don't really care. I'm just going to load this up. In fact, let me do a, uh, let me do a knuckle test real quick on this Lost Art Liquids space rocks. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, tastes very tart. feels like it's going to be some sort of uh, lemonade-y situation going on here. I feel like there could be uh, some sweetener in this. I feel like this might be over the line of sweetness for me. And that is definitely old curmudgeon -y grim green coming out. I used to have uh, the biggest sweet tooth that I have ever known, ever known in another human being. If I had a choice of food, it would be Butterfingers. I have an insane sweet tooth. And I've noticed that as I'm getting older and more curmudgeon -y in my life, I don't like as sweet of things. Just to give you an example, last night for dessert, I had an apple and some organic peanut butter. And that to me was like, dessert. So yeah, maybe I am just getting old and curmudgeon-y. But anyway, I'm excited to try this Lost Art Liquids Space Rocks. So what do we have in here? This is a 0.15. I'm going to turn it up to about 70 watts. Let's see how it goes. First toot on Space Rocks. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that thing that I always do during the random juice tasting. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna vape a little bit of this, and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. And I'm actually gonna look up what the flavor profile is of this after I vape it, because it's very, very confusing. It kind of tastes candied a little bit, a little bit like pixie sticks. It is very sweet, but there's like a lemonade citrus kind of thing going on. Let me spend some more time with it. I'll be right back. Okay, grape. I think there might be grape in this.
Space Rocks is a sweet and fruity strawberry kiwi Pop Rocks candy. Strawberry and kiwi. Let me keep that in mind because I swear up and down I was tasting grape in this. And I'm not saying that like I, I have such an amazing palate that I'm able to pick out subtle nuances. Like maybe they did use grape in this. It's just not listed as a flavor. Lots of, I mean, every e-liquid vendor I've ever known has done that. There was a root beer flavor I tried not too long ago where they're like, oh, there's not even any root beer in this. Strawberry and kiwi. Okay, yeah. I still taste grape and I still taste citrus. In fact, the first pull that I took off of this Space Rocks tasted like an orange peel or like a lemon peel to me. And yeah, now of course it's just getting all fucking vapey in here. Okay, strawberry kiwi, yeah. Um, it's good, it, it's very candy-ish. Um, it's sweet, it's kind of just over the borderline of being just a little bit too sweet to me. It's, it's, it's a hair gaggy for my palate. It's just a little bit too sweet. It's like just a little bit more sweet than like Anarchist Pink Lemonade. Like Anarchist Pink Lemonade really straddles that fence of being too sweet for me. Sometimes I vape it and it's wonderful and beautiful. And sometimes I vape that Anarchist Pink Lemonade and I go, okay. It's, uh, that's too sweet for me right now. I have a feeling this is one that's gonna be a lot like Pink Anarchist, Pink Anarchist, Anarchist Pink Lemonade. I have a feeling I could vape this for a while and then be suddenly not okay with it. Or maybe that's just the nudge giving me amazing nudge flavor. I, I don't know, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> yeah, cool, all right, well there you go. Space Rocks from Lost Art Liquids. And once again, thank you everybody for your thoughts, comments, and feedback on the Lost Art Liquids branding. The Space Rocks is very, very sweet, and apparently it's a strawberry kiwi, even though for some reason I taste orange peels and grape in it. But who knows? I could just be an idiot as well. There's a very high possibility of that. Anyway, we're done. We're gonna wrap this, we're gonna wrap this vlog all up. Thank you for hanging in there with me while we do some, while we do maybe a few of these more condensed vlogs. I do have a plan. I do have a plan and it's gonna be baller. But anyway, everybody, that's what I got for today. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, I'll have links down in the description. Let's keep on vaping.